And now please welcome Marriott Vice President Homes and Villas, Jennifer Shea, in discussion with Skift Hospitality Editor, Nancy Trejos. Um, so Jennifer, it's so great to have you here. Delighted to be here. Yes. So Marriott International, the largest mm -hmm. hotel company in the world, uh, created Homes and Villas just in May. Right. And it was a pretty big, surprising move. <laughs> um, can you start by talking about why Marriott decided to get into this space? Sure. Well, whenever Marriott makes a choice, we really look to our customers as our North Star. What's the consumer insight and what was the need? And one of the things that we were seeing over the last few years is this growth of the sharing economy. And in 2018 and 2017, we heard from our customers, 27% of our guests were leaving our portfolio of hotels to rent a home on a given year. And so we knew that the opportunity really existed for us to serve our guests in the home rental space beyond just hotels, which is really what prompted that entry. All right, and um, you know, you've said before that right. this is not a, an attempt to compete with the likes of Airbnb and Verbo, but how can you not be seen as being a competitor? Sure. So it's interesting because we're taking a very different approach to this, and it goes back to the consumer insight. When we talk to our guests, we ask them, what are your pain points today when it comes to renting homes? And they told us two big things. One is, um, there's too much choice. I see, when I go out and I do a search, I see thousands and thousands of listings, and it's hard for me to understand which of these are actually homes that I would feel good about bringing family and friends to because when I plan that trip and I pick that home, everyone looks to me to say, hey, did you do a good job? And if it isn't a good job, I don't hear the end of it, right? People complain to me for forever. So the first pain point was, frankly, too much inventory with very little ability to understand what was good and what wasn't. The second insight was anxiety. There was this anxiety that people had from the time they booked all the way up to when they went to the home. And the fear is, will the house look like the photos? What happens if something goes wrong? Um, who can I reach out to? Where do I need to go to get the key? All of these pain points really differentiated how we went into the market. And so what we're doing is we're focused on really intelligent growth. We're going into a market in a model that is different than competitors. Um, and frankly, it borrows from some of the learnings that we have as a hotel company. We work with professional property management companies. And these are companies that we know have worked in the industry, have great operations, great service, could deliver the experience that we knew our guests needed. Things like 24-7 service, ability to reach out to anybody at any given time, fire life safety. Um, and so we are going into this space in a probably more thoughtful and curated way in order to really solve for the pain points that we know that our guests are experiencing. And how are you vetting the properties? Like, how are you making sure that they meet the, the yeah. Marriott brand standards? Oh, it's, it's robust, right? Because 90 yeah. plus years of experience in hospitality has taught us a lot. And you can't learn that overnight. And what we've been able to do is bring a lot of that into this home rental space. We have essentially what I think about as three layers. The first layer is we take a look at the property management company and do a fairly thorough review of their operations, how they comply with, from a legal perspective, what's their service profile look like, what's their financial standing look like, what does their leadership team look like. And so we do a really thorough job because at the end of the day we believe that if you have a strong operating team in a market, you have strong product. So that's the first thing we do. The second thing we do is we take a look at every home. And so we work with our property management companies and we essentially train them to say, what does a Marriott approved property look like? And we work together through hundreds and dozens of examples to get to that. And then someone from my team looks at every single home for, um, from a digital perspective, fit finish, quality, curation, um, and we take all of those factors into place. And then the third and the final is we have a pretty robust quality program. And um, that is something that happens throughout. And so uh, whether it's audits from independent partners that we leverage in our hotel business, 
or voice of customers. When our guests stay at a home, they give us feedback on that, and we take that feedback and use it to continue to curate and refine. Right, and like, you know, we, are, we have more than 6,000 hotels. We Marriott have 7,000 hotels. Okay. Right. With and a million plus rooms. Right. And there are times when you, uh, you make the hotels leave your system because they're not working, right? Right. So will that happen as well? Would Absolutely. You be, yeah. And so um, I think for us, we look at a relationship with our guests. We have 137 million Merritt Bonvoy guests. And every single one of them is incredibly important to us. And because we serve that guest oftentimes in business travels, our platinum titanium guests can stay with us for hundreds of nights on a given year. And so when they take that vacation with their family or with their friends, that experience is incredibly important to us. That's why we have the level of rigor that we do around every unit. So if we ever feel like a, a unit or a home falls short of that, we remove that unit fairly quickly. Um, and we work with our property management partners to say, hey, look, this unit may be great, but we got X or Y complaints around the microwave or the stove not working that needs to get repaired and it triggers the, the feedback. Or if we feel like there's a, a consistent problem that can't be solutioned, um, we quickly take it off. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned Bonvoy, so yes. is this a play for uh, your more loyalty? Well, you know, the Merritt Bonvoy program, is it's a travel program that's incredibly powerful. We have 137 million members and we want to be able to serve those members whether they travel for a business trip in and out of a city for one day. And that use case is great for our hotels because frankly, when I go into a city, plans may change. No one has the ability to kind of do the scheduling that you need to do a home rental. Um, but we also want to serve them when it, it's a family trip or friends gathering for a milestone birthday. And so homes and villas is a way to continue to keep our guests within our portfolio by serving more of their needs with a new product. Um, it's been an incredible venue for them to also use their currency. So Marriott Bonvoy points are a form of currency for our guests. And a lot of times we hear these wonderful stories of um, our guests saying, I've saved so many points during my business travels, and now you're giving me an opportunity to use it with family at a lake house. You mentioned business travelers, um, mm -hmm. and typically with uh, short-term rentals, that is more for leisure travelers. Right. Do you think you'll be able to attract business travelers to some of these homes? You know, there are actually some use cases for which short-term rentals become pretty compelling for um, business travelers. And, like a couple examples are um, when you're on a corporate assignment and your company, your financial company sends you to London for a 45-day project, hmm. right? And, and in that instance, you don't feel like you want to be in a hotel for 45 days. You want the amenities and the space of a home. In those instances, you may find that a short-term rental is a really good use case. But generally, our product is really geared towards larger groups who want living spaces and kitchens. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, um, Hilton CEO, Chris Nassetta, he's gone on the record as saying that he doesn't want them he doesn't want Hilton to go into yeah. the short-term rental space. Sure. He says it's a completely different business. Mm -hmm. So what is Marriott seeing yeah. that Chris is not seeing? So a couple of things. Um, I think it is a different business, right? And so and I, we've done hotels for 90 plus years. Um, short-term rental is a different business, but it isn't completely different and it has quite a bit of learnings that can port over from the hotel industry, right? And so there are a few things that we've learned um, going through the, the last six months. Um, the backbone of every great hotel is housekeeping and cleanliness, right? If you don't get that right, you can't run a hotel well. Mm -hmm. The same can be said in home rental space. And um, an example is we're beginning to bring our expertise and our know-how in. Um, we recently launched uh, you know, a best practices class in housekeeping in homes with our partner Ecolab for some of our management company partners. And so we're taking kind of some of the principles and ideas behind the hotel industry and saying, how do we bring that into the home rental industry and help that industry continue its professionalization? 
And I also think that the angle that we're, the model that we're pursuing from Marriott also has several learnings from our franchise model, right? We don't own hotels. Marriott owns maybe a dozen hotels at any given time. What we do is we work with really great operators, owners, franchisees who understand the market, who operate well. We give them brands, we give them standards, we give them requirements, we vet them. And we know that those folks who are operating, whether it's in a suburban market or an urban market, know how to operate well in that marketplace. And, and we're taking some of those learnings and applying it within the home rental space. So you say now you have uh, at least 5,000 homes. Mm -hmm. Uh, what does a typical home look like? Where mm. is it? Are you in urban uh, right. parts of the country, suburban? Yeah. So one of the learnings that we've had as we've gone into um, this space is, um, I call it kind of three segments within the vacation rental space. Um, there's the beaches, so the things around the coast of the countries, um, and these are kind of very leisure-driven destinations where consumers want to go out and get sun. Um, and then we have kind of the ski type of destinations. And then there are urban destinations. And so when you look across those three, you'll see some differences. But typically for us, we tend to, our average home is probably about three plus bedrooms. Our guests are saying five plus evenings. 90% um, of them are our loyalty members. And we are really dialing into a different product more bedrooms, shared spaces, in-unit laundry, full kitchen, because the moments that really matter for our guests are the times they spend together, whether it's by the fire pit in the backyard, or you know, a great, everyone pitches in and makes breakfast for the, the family in the morning. Yeah, and Marriott Bonvoy has, you have Marriott experiences, yes. so will those guests also be able to take advantage of it's that. It's a really, I mean, and this is an example of how we bring the power of mm -hmm. our portfolio and our brand together. We recently did a Marriott Bonvoy Moments auction um, where we had a private estate on the Cayman Islands uh, with a private boat tour to go conch diving in the Grand Caymans. And that was followed up with a, a master class by a Michelin chef, David Boulay. Um, and that experience went for over two million Marriott Bonvoy points. And so um, this is a great way. I mean, you're clearly seeing that level of demand. We've seen several bookings um, on our platform for multi-million points, which tells us there's a demand and a desire for this type of experience. Um, and combining the, the power of our brand and that travel program with the partners that we have with amazing chefs um, and the homes that we have to share, which gives you the privacy and the luxury. Um, that's made for some pretty compelling offers for guests. Right. Um, so Marriott, it's not the only hotel company to get into this space. So we know that uh, Hyatt took a stake in Oasis Collection and um, that didn't go very well. Uh, uh, Accor acquired One Fine Stay mm -hmm. and they're struggling with that. Yep. So what's gonna be the difference here? How uh, is Marriott yeah. going to make this work? That's right. You know. I go back to, I'm a big believer in looking at the customer, right? Our consumer, and the problem we were solving is our consumers had challenges finding homes that were curated that deliver the right level of experience. We had an opportunity where we said, we don't want 27% of our guests to leave our portfolio. And so we're entering um, that space differently. We are not buying or investing in a property management company. We're partnering with them. We're saying, hey, look, we understand that operating a great home short-term rental of a company means sometimes you really know a given market. And um, as Marriott, we actually have no interest in going in and becoming managers here. We want to partner with the best property management companies globally. And so the angle that we're taking, which is different, is we're not investing or purchasing in a property management company. We're going out there and we're curating the best and we're working in partnership with them. Mm -hmm. So uh, in, back in May, you said you had 2,000 properties. Right. Now you have 5,000. Correct. So what is your plan for growth? How many yeah. more of these homes are we, we going to see? Sure. Um, Merit is a global hospitality company. We go where our customers want us to be. 
And so I would say, you know, while we certainly don't have specific numbers that we're targeting, I think what we do know is today we even at 5,000 homes, don't have enough to meet all the demand and the destinations and the choice that consumers want. And so there's a difference between going to a destination and saying, let me do a search to see if I have a home at this particular beach destination. And we want to give our guests enough choice by the time they identify the number of bedrooms, their specific dates, and the fact that they want to bring a pet, you still need some choice there. Um, and so we'll continue to grow. Uh, we're definitely looking at markets that are accretive to Marriott. And so one of the things that we love about the short-term rental space is we're allowed to be in markets that traditionally don't make sense for large hotels, right? They're deeply seasonal markets where you get a ton of business during the peak season, but during the off season, nobody really wants to go to the beaches on the Carolinas in December, per se. And so our ability to grow in markets where we don't have hotels today is also a lens that we're taking. We want to give our Merit Bonvoy guests more destinations to go to. And if that means it's a home um, that we can pull onto the platform fairly quickly, we'll do that. So what markets are you thinking of, can you say? Um, the so, urban or? You know. Yeah, I would say you'll see us begin to grow more in beach and ski will be fairly selective about the urban markets. And I think we're going to be selective for a few reasons. One is regulatory environments in some of these urban markets are much more complex. And for us, regulatory compliance is a, an incredibly important criteria before we enter any given market. Um, and I think another reason is we've got great hotel products that suit your need in many of our urban destinations. Um, and so while we'll look at urban, I think globally you'll see us continue to grow in a lot of the beach, the vacation destinations, these new markets that we haven't been in before. Well, you mentioned the compliance and the regulations, which has always been the tension with short-term sure. rentals. Sure. Um, it's, so how, how is that a challenge for you yeah. going into that space? So for us, it's, it, it's the regulatory and the compliance component is um, a critical factor in any market we go to, and we take a couple of approaches. I think the, the most important approach is, look, the landscape is incredibly complex, and um, we have found that in finding the right property managers, they understand all the nuances of the compliance and the regulatory requirements in a specific market. So if you think about a city, a city may have certain criteria, but even within that city, there are neighborhoods which have different criteria. And so we go through a the similar two-step process, which is we are monitoring compliance and regulations in major cities that we're in. We are also working with each of our property management companies to understand what steps they put in place, what checks, what measures they put in place to make sure those are getting followed, and then we do some audits as well. Great. Um, and again, with the growth, Right. Okay. This is an experiment when it comes down to it in some ways. It's innovation as we talked about. It is an innovation about. and I would say the experiment happened with our initial launch yeah. of Tribute Portfolio Homes in 2018. Mm -hmm. Now this is a business. Right. Well at what point do you pull the plug? If it's not working, Sure. I mean, how much investment, sure. energy, time is Marriott willing to put into this? I would go back to 2018 when we launched Tribute Portfolio Homes. And that was our pilot, where we went out and we said, we think we have the right business model, the right value proposition for our guests. And we spent a little over a year testing that and evolving it. And I think we as a company knew at that time the model was right. We were solving a pain point for our guests. This was really resonating. And so now when we launched Homes and Villas, we launched Homes and Villas as a business. And I don't think in the history of Merit we've ever pulled a, you know, a part of our business, like a brand effectively, mm -hmm. um, down. So I would say for our, for our consumers, Homes and Villas is a business and it's a business that will continue to grow. Great. Well, I think we have some questions here um, that you can see up there. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Okay. Well, what demographic age group do you see is the biggest challenge to acquire as a consumer? Huh. This is, a customer. Yeah. this is interesting because if you look at our uh, Marriott Bonvoy guests and our travelers, those tend to be folks, I would say, um, in the Gen X boomer mm -hmm. phase, right? Um, and so our typical guest age it tends to be a little bit older than, than maybe some of our competitors out there. Um, 
But I do think like today, I would say the up and coming, the, the Gen Zs, right? They're getting into travel and they're getting into home share. And oftentimes when you're beginning to travel and you just come out of college, your budget isn't very big. And, and as Marriott, we've never been the low cost player and we won't be. So Homes and Villas is a product that is premium to luxury to ultra luxury. And so um, in terms of how consumers are travel, I would say you know, while we aspire and we think that there's a lot about Homes and Villas that will be compelling for this next generation, um, sometimes you'll see that the price point sensitivity becomes a big driver and, and they're never gonna find the cheapest product. There are economy products out there that, that we won't put on our platform. So you won't find Gen Z and the homes and villas? Oh, you'll find Gen yeah, Z okay. and the homes and villas, but they'll be with their parents <laughs> and then with their grandparents <laughs> and or their friends. Um, and so they will definitely be in there. And uh, we believe that with that great experience, they will continue to grow into our, um, our portfolio. And we see that happen in hotels. We talk about our gateway brands and um, the brands that consumers begin to stay. You may stay with us for the first time in a moxie or a courtyard, but in a few years, you typically graduate to the Marriott Hotels, <laughs> the Renaissance, the Westins, the Ritz Carltons, and we want to keep you and grow you throughout our mm -hmm. trust. So we're getting a lot of questions here. Um, yeah. Will Marriott stop lo lobbying against short-term rentals now? Yeah, oh, who picked that <laughs> that's, question? That's an interesting um, one. So here's, here's the thing. We have always acknowledged there is room for short-term rentals, right? Our position has always been that has to be compliant, safe, and regulated and paying taxes. Similar, It's a level playing field, right? And we believe strongly enough in that that we've moved into this business to actually do that very thing. We believe you can be in short-term rentals and you can do it according to compliance and according to the regulations. And so we, I don't think, we never lobbied against the concept of having short-term rentals. I think we always said, we wanna make sure for consumers and guests that that solution is compliant with the laws, it's safe, it's legal, it's operating on a, a, a level playing field. Well, I think we're running out of time here, so that's an interesting question to end okay. on. <laughs> um, well, thank you so much. Great. This has Thanks. been really interesting. Thanks thank so you. much. Bye -bye.